Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies, until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning, and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them, and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons and his daughters, and his oxen and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Multitudes, multitudes in the Valley of Decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. The Lord Jesus Christ is our life, and the gospel of Jesus Christ is the blessing. Achan is mentioned six times in the word of God. Now Revelation 13 verse 18 says to count the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man. This takes us to Achan. So let's take a closer look at Achan and see what Achan did that was so wicked and why he has been marked as the man of sin, the son of perdition. In Joshua 7 verse 18, the word of God says that Achan was taken. Revelation 19 verse 20, and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him 
with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. John chapter 8 verse 3 through 7 And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Now it's interesting because Exodus 32 verse 18 says, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Hebrews 7 verse 12 says, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Romans 3.27 reads, Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Isaiah 53 verse 6 through 8. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. So not only was Achan taken, but we read in Joshua 22 verse 20 that Achan committed a trespass in the accursed thing. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19 through 21 reads, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Deuteronomy 21 verse 23 His body shall not remain all night upon the tree. But thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God. That thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Galatians 3 verse 10 through 13. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Galatians 1, 8-9 but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So notice the two there. Babylon is fallen, is falling. Galatians 5, 4 says, Ye who are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Let him be accursed, let him be accursed. A heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. So Achan was taken. He committed a trespass in the accursed thing. And also in Joshua seven nineteen, we read that Achan didn't give glory to the Lord. 
Galatians 6, 12 through 14 reads, As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. In Joshua 7, 21, we read that Achan coveted and took a Babylonish garment. Jude 1, verse 23 reads, And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. James 5, 1 through 2. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Matthew 23, verse 4 through 5. For they bind heavy burdens, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. How many fingers do you have, friends? You have ten fingers, that's the law. But all their works they do, for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Revelation 16 verse 15 Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. We are to put off the old man and put on the new man. We are to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That means we stop having confidence in the flesh and we trust in Christ. And we wash our robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. In Joshua 7 verse 21, we read how Achan hid the spoils in the earth. Now if we go to Matthew 25, 24 through 30, we read, Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this wicked servant said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. See, this wicked servant didn't really know the Lord because the Lord is not a hard man. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord is gracious. He is full of compassion. He is long suffering. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth them that trust in him. See, but this wicked servant didn't trust in Christ. He trusted in himself. He was trusting in his own works, and he thought the Lord was a hard man. And in Titus 1.16 we read that they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. See, because that's what they trust in, their works. And by trusting in themselves in their works, they are denying the Lord Jesus Christ. And look what this wicked servant says. He says, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Let me translate that and put it in layman's terms to you. He's basically saying that you're a hard man. You make us do all the work, and you do nothing. When in fact, it's the opposite. Jesus Christ did it all on the cross of Calvary. It is finished. We just have to trust in Christ and enter in to His rest. The works were finished from the foundation of the world. So this wicked third servant says, I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. That takes us back all the way to Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. 
And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. So there's nothing new under the sun, my friend. The thing which hath been is the thing which shall be, declaring the end from the beginning. See, from the very beginning, we read about Adam and Eve trying to clothe themselves by their own works, by the works of the law. But in Genesis 3, verse 21, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. See, the Lord had to clothe them. But the man of sin tries to clothe himself with his own filthy rags. And in Isaiah 59 verse 6, we read, Their web shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. That's verse 6. 600, 3 score, and 6. The number of the beast, the number of a man. Achan is mentioned six times in the word of God. And he had this Babylonian garment that he coveted. So in reference to this wicked third servant still in the flesh going about establishing his own righteousness, the Lord says, Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. That phrase, I will declare, is mentioned ten times in the Blessed King James Bible. Ten representing the law. The beast who is the eighth with the ten horns in his head, trying to justify himself by the works of the law. Isaiah 57, 11 through 12. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared that thou hast lied and hast not remembered me nor laid it to thy heart? Have not I held my peace even of old and thou fearest me not? I will declare thy righteousness in thy works, for they shall not profit thee. Cast ye the unprofitable servant in the outer darkness. I will declare thy righteousness in thy works, for they shall not profit thee. Proverbs 11.4 says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. See, the Lord Jesus Christ is our righteousness. If you are trusting in your works, in your own righteousness, they're not going to profit you, friend. In Joshua 7, verse 25, we read that Achan troubled the children of Israel. Now, if we go to Acts 15, verse 24, we read about Antichrist. And we read, For as much as we have heard, that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. So what was Achan doing? He was going around exalting himself, preaching a work salvation heresy, saying you got to keep the law, We know we got to trust in Jesus Christ and exalt the Lord rather than ourselves. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. We are to glory in the Lord Jesus Christ, not in our own shame. All right, moving along, let's go to the second mention. We find that phrase, burn them. 2 Samuel 5, 19 through 21. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And David came to Belperazim, and David smote them there and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Belperazim. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. So notice David, a man after God's own heart inquiring of the Lord whether he was going to get this victory over his enemy. Because the battle is the Lord's, and the victory that overcometh the whole world is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, David didn't go to inquire with a familiar spirit like Saul did. He inquired at the Lord. And David left their images and burned them. Now that phrase, their images, is also mentioned six times in the Blessed King James Bible. The first mention we find in Exodus 23 verse 24. 
Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Remember how Jesus overthrew the tables. Exodus 34, verse 12 through 14. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. Three things. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Get the third mention in Deuteronomy 7, verse 3 through 5. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them, ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. And there we have that fourth one in 2 Samuel 5.21. And there they left their images, and David and his men burned them. Ezekiel 30.12-13. And I will make the rivers dry, and sell the land into the hand of the wicked. And I will make the land waste in all that is therein. By the hand of strangers, I the Lord have spoken it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols, and I will cause their images to cease out of Noth. And there shall be no more a prince of the land of Egypt, and I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. We get the sixth mention in Hosea 10, verse 1 through 2. Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars, and he shall spoil their images. So according to Colossians 1, verse 6, the gospel of Jesus Christ is what brings forth fruit unto God. But here we are in Hosea 10, representing the law, and Israel is bringing forth fruit unto himself. See, they're not preaching the gospel, freely ye have received, freely give. They're preaching the law. They're preaching a work salvation. And they're making twofold the child of hell than themselves. And Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now, therefore, call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtlety, to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. And Jehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. And Jehu went, and Jehonadab the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, Search, and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshippers of Baal only. And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without, and said, If any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them, let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out, and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal, and burned them. And they break down the image of Baal, and break down the house of Baal, and made it a draught house unto this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. 2 Kings chapter 23 And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. 
And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. And he brake down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba and break down the high places of the gates that were in the entering of the gate of Joshua the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire of Molech. And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the son with fire. And the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down, and break them down from thence, and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon the king of Israel had builded for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he break in pieces the images, and cut down the groves, and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, and the high place which Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, had made, both that altar and the high place he brake down, and burned the high place, and stamped it small to powder, and burned the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchres that were there in the mount, and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchres, and burned them upon the altar, and polluted it, according to the word of the Lord which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, What title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the sepulchre of the man of God which came from Judah, and proclaim these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, Let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took away, and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there upon the altars, and burned men's bones upon them, and returned to Jerusalem. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. Surely there was not holden such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Judah. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was holden to the Lord in Jerusalem. 
Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away, that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him. All right, so the sixth and the final mention we find of burn them is found in Acts chapter 19, verse 19. Many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together and burn them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Revelation 14 verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. <laughs> 